Morning, 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 guys. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone's just in front. This is episode 179 of Tottenham Walks. It's also Sunday, March the 25th, I think. The 2023 version of it. I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love. Please, guys, do me a favour. Smash the like button for me. Smash the subscribe on the channel. If you haven't, hit the notification bell to see the freshest content first. And leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. Just before I get going... Just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that's uh, hit the subscribe button this week. About 140 of you or something have. It's crazy. We've flown past 6K and we're on our way now to 7K. So Bugsy and I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has um, you know, given some of your attention to the channel over the last, whatever it is, 14 months. It's a uh, really cool little story to think that I can come out and talk to you guys on my dog walks every day and... So many of you want to come for the walk with me. Bugsy really likes it. So do I. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Keep uh, keep keep following, and we'll see where we can go with this thing. Um, in terms of news out today, guys, look, I'll be honest. Start with the Conte thing. There really isn't anything new to discuss. Rumours today that he's going to agree a three-year deal with Inter Milan. Um, once all this has been, you know, confirmed and resolved. There's been rumours that the contract uh, clause has been misrepresented. Some people, myself included, are under the impression that um, if he gets fired within the 18 months, then unless it's for due cause, for, I guess, you know, bringing the club into disrepute, then he's entitled to an extra year on his contract, which if true and is responsible for the, me the mechanics of what he did, not that what he said was wrong, but when he said it, how he said it, and why he said it, I have many problems with. But anyway, put that to one side. Some people are saying that's actually not that that's the contract clause. The actual clause where he ends up getting an extra 15 million quid is if Tottenham finish top four. I'm not sure which is true. I'm just going off of what I've seen in the, in the media. But in an ideal world, this one report that I saw that was talking about the 15 million pound thing being about top four finish. Well, if that is the case, then maybe we can just pay him out his three and a half million quid now, get the job done and let everyone move on with their lives. The radio silence from Tottenham continues to upset a lot of people. There hasn't been an, an acknowledgement of it from the club whatsoever, but maybe you know that is a situation by design. Because on one hand, if they can't find a resolution, then they can bring Conte back in for the Everton game. And, you know, as far as anything official, nothing's changed. Nothing has been said, nothing's changed. So, you know, it could be put all down to just wild speculation from the media. And that allows everyone to save a bit of face. In reality, though, I think we all know that there are massive talks going on and that there is no smoke without fire. But we'll wait and see. Julian Nagelsmann is still favourite to take over at Tottenham. I say Nagelsmann, I've been saying Na Nagelsmann, but I've been called out in every video for getting his name wrong. <laughs> we'll sing what we want, we'll sing what we want. <laughs> um, so Julian Nagelsmann still favourite, Pochettino still the people's favourite. There's pictures out on Instagram that he's on holiday in Japan. People are reading into that saying maybe that means that there's no imminent incoming from him. Don't know if that's true. You know, he's only a flight away. He could be home within 24 hours. And, you know, maybe it's a way for him to have one final quick vacation with his family before uh, before settling into a new job. Again, all speculation. There's nothing concrete on it. There's no concrete transfer news really either, guys. There's a couple of stories out there for you. One of them, Kim Min Jae, channel favourite of mine. I mentioned several times on the channel how much I'd love to see him come in. But I think, I haven't got the quote, but I saw somewhere him clarifying and kind of laughing off any uh, interest from overseas and laughing off the prospect of him leaving Napoli. So I guess we could put that one to bed for the time being. It's probably as expected, you know. My heart led my head on uh, that particular topic. And if it's true that he's happy in Napoli and why wouldn't you be, then yeah, he's not gonna be leaving and he probably will sit down and get a new contract 
sorted out. He does still have, of course, that relegation release, or sorry, that minimum fee release clause that could be activated and then money talks. But I'm not going to mention his name again for a while until, um, unless some other news emerges. But, oh yeah, and, and the only other news out there really, guys, is um, a guy called Ibrahim Sangare, a PSV Eindhoven midfielder, plays for Ivory Coast. He's been linked with Tottenham, been linked with Liverpool and Arsenal and Man United and West Ham. Um, was supposed to leave it last summer, signed a five-year deal with Eindhoven and then now apparently Eindhoven are willing to cash in on the player at his peak value and there's a 37 million euro release clause for him. I didn't know too much about him so I went and used my Y Scout tool and spent about an hour looking through each of the little components of his game. It's such a brilliant tool. If you guys have got a few quid you know, put to one side and, and are interested in that stuff, go and get Y Scout and you can look at any player and just zone in, zoom in on any particular style of characteristic that you're interested in, whether it be his duels, heading ability, tackling, one-on-ones, shooting, whatever. He, you know, you can see it all, and you can see every clip that has ever been um, that has ever been made or found or, or taken about him doing his, doing those things. And so it's quite, it's far better than looking at highlight tube, reels on YouTube. Um, if you don't have obviously the, uh, the, the the attention to that league and you haven't seen that player in enough detail, it's a scout stream essentially. And for me, I looked into Ibrahim Sangare and look, my takeaways are he's first of all he's got a thunderbolt left foot. He's a midfielder, like a box to box midfielder. He's six foot three. He's very fast. He's very strong. You know, very um, very sort of typical of that kind of Ivorian coast kind of physical um, physical competence, if you like, and. Look, he's got a good range of passing. One of the things that I did see that stood out about him is with Eindhoven especially, but even for Ivory Coast as well, when the team are pushing up in an offensive pattern and then uh, he, they, they would get broken down and the transition would take place, he would often be one of the furthest forward midfielders, even almost joining up as a striker. And then when the transition happens, when they get dispossessed and, they, and the other team move, move back with the ball, he has this weird ability to be able to kind of almost sneak up on the player with the ball, but whilst galloping at real pace to get there and then can dispossess the player from behind without giving away too many fouls, without having a poor disciplinary record. Almost similar to like what Ollie Skip is emerging as being able to do for Tottenham. A brilliant, brilliant tackler of the ball when the transition takes place. And it's a very, very crucial asset uh, to be able to, dis to disrupt the transition, right? And, and break down moves before they become something. And if you have a player that can do that, then obviously it allows your, uh, your manager to feel more confident pushing the defense up. So for teams that play with a higher line and play with that press, who then get dispossessed, then his, his ability to get back and, and, uh, and disrupt their, their, the, the opposition's uh, you know, initial momentum is almost invaluable. So that, they're the good things about him. But what I would say, all of the good things about him that I noticed, they all look a little bit clumsy. It almost looks like it's by mistake that he is someone that shouldn't get himself into the positions that he finds himself in, shouldn't you know, get caught out almost as frequently as he does. But then when he does, he has a brilliant ability to correct the mistake. And now that just might be the style of how he looks when he runs and, and, and the way that he kind of operates on the pitch. And maybe I'm being harsh because I don't know him that well. But it doesn't look uh, smooth or calculated. It looks a little bit desperate and languid and, and awkward. But at the same time, you know, nine times out of ten, he seems to correct the mistake and ends up winning the ball back. So... Like, you know, you get all the check marks for, for, for the outcome, but some of the question marks, I guess, around the, the input, like how, how the thing starts in the first place. Aerially, as you'd expect for someone who's six foot three, he's very, very talented, good in the air, scores some goals. He's also got a wondrous left foot where he scored, I think, three or four goals in the last year or so from outside the box. And with his left foot, they're pile drivers. They're not kind of clear, calculated, kind of sunny type shots. That, that find the top bins there. They're balls that are loose that he runs onto and just puts his foot through it and they fly into the top locker. So an interesting player. Do I think he's the, you know, the, the solution to our kind of, our mon the need for our Casemiro, the need for our Thomas Party, the need for our version of, um, you know, Rodri or whatever. I don't think he's the guy. I think he'll probably go somewhere else. If he does come to the Premier League, I don't think you'll see him go to a, like a top four or five team. I think you might see him go to a West Ham if, West Ham was to sell Declan Rice 
to Arsenal or to somewhere else. I think that would make a lot of sense. Do I think he's worth 37 million quid? Probably not. Um, but, you know, like I say, from what I've seen, the output's always very good. It's just the, the way that the input is structured looks a little bit weird to me. Um, good player, 25 years old. We'll see what happens. Apart from that, guys, there is nothing else to report on from Tottenham today. So I'll love you and leave you. And I'm going to get out of this horrible weather. Please like, subscribe and follow. And as always, bye-bye.